Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Uh, got some exciting news actually. Recently I was in Genii Online, they did a little article about my Blackpool video, that was very very nice. And also, recently we hit 600 subscribers, which is just mental. Thank you so much for the support that is coming to this channel. It always really makes my day uh, when people subscribe and want to watch my videos. I know last video I said <laughs> look out for next Sunday's video, it came to Sunday and I did not post a video. I am incredibly unreliable. And actually that was sort of mentioned in the article. They said he posts videos about once a week. <laughs> Thanks for that. <laughs> I do try and post once a week. I, I really do. I'm just, I'm just not very good. However, I do sort of have an excuse as to why I didn't post last week. I was working on my documentary. In case you don't know, over the past few months I have been working on a 30 minute documentary about the history of magic as part of my A-levels, and last week I was finishing that off, and now it is all complete! So that is all out of the way, it has been a massive, massive project um, that's just been on my mind constantly. But now that's finished, I can be focusing uh, on my magic, I'm going to be focusing uh, on my YouTube. Once you've finished watching this video, if you want to go to the description, the top line of the description, there should be a link to the documentary uh, where you can go and watch that if you want. You don't have to. I didn't make it for YouTube. I made it for my A-levels, so it's not my finest work, but hey, if you want to pour yourself a cup of tea, sit down for half an hour and watch me talk about the history of magic with lots of cool editing, uh, then yeah, go for it. <laughs> Today's video is a super, super exciting one. I have, somewhere, in a cupboard far away, a deck of cards that is literally 70 years old. Today, I'm going to find it and I'm going to see how good it is. But yeah, first, I do literally need to go and find it, so let's do that now. Remote control helicopter? I mean, that's pretty cool, I know what I'm looking for. Two hours, and I finally found the deck of cards. Time to open them up and uh, see if they're any good. Here we go. All right, I've got the cards here. These are actually 70 years old. Um, they belong to my granddad, and they have been passed down and ended up in a cupboard, and now they are here with me. I don't think I've ever actually taken them out of the bag before. I've definitely seen them before and I know about them. I don't know how used they are, um, but we're going to open them now for the first time and see. I'm being very delicate with them because I honestly don't know what condition they're in. You can see they look quite sort of brown on the edges. Okay, here we go. These are the cards. 70 years old. Okay, here they are. So, hmm, there's a blank card in the middle, I'm not sure what that's about, but that's not been used nearly as much as the other ones, I mean, you can't even tell that this is an old card, it just looks normal. Wow, that's the Joker, look at the design on the Joker, I have no idea what that design is about, but that is pretty cool. This is the back design. Again, like, very, very simple, and I'm not sure what size these cards are. They're very strange dimensions. They're somewhere between poker and bridge, but I'm not entirely sure uh, what size they are, if there even is a name for them. The edges are incredibly brown. I mean, they have been used a lot, you know. They've been through some, some stuff. Look at this card, for example. Look at the corner of it. It's just completely, like, mangled. But weirdly, the cards are actually still in, like, you know, quite good condition. I mean, they're 70 years old, so, you know, they've been through a lot of, you know, games of cards and so on. Oh, look at this one. One of them here has even, like, been ripped a little bit. There's a little tear in that. I'm not going to obviously make it bigger, but you can see that's ripped. And while we're on this card, take a look at the uh, design of it. I mean, actually not that far off sort of a standard bicycle design you'd see now. It's quite uh, similar. Let's see what else. 
Queen of Spades looks a bit weird. Okay, let's see how they uh, how they handle. I mean, actually not that bad. I thought they'd just be stuck together in like solid blocks, but they are really quite, you know, good for their age. I feel kind of bad springing them, but they spring well as well. They do not fan well at all though. I mean, they are very like clumped together. When it comes to riffle shuffle though, not bad. There's no box to them either. Um, the box just wasn't there. It's been missing, I don't know how long for. I don't know if they even had a box. They feel thick as well. I mean, the deck feels like very, very bulky. The cards are much, much thicker. So I was looking for the Ace of Spades and I couldn't really find it, but then I realized it's been stuck to the Ace of Clubs. <laughs> There's like so much friction between them, I couldn't even separate the cards. But that is the Ace of Spades. It says Thomas De La Rue and Company Limited, London. So that is the company of the cards. So I'm doing a bit of research now. Thomas De La Rue playing cards. He produced his first playing cards in 1832 and over the years came to be recognised as the inventor of the modern English playing card. Oh my goodness. The Joker is absolutely incredible. Um, the Ace of Spades is weird. I don't know what I think of the Ace of Spades, to be honest, as a design. I don't even know if this is a full deck. I'm just going to check if this is a full deck. 48, 49, 50, 51, 52. It is a full deck of cards. Not a single card has been lost over the years. And they don't even have a box. So, I mean, that is, that is pretty incredible. I'm not going to handle them too much because I sort of feel like they're an artifact. Um, but they're going to go back in the bag. I'm going to put them somewhere much safer than up in that cupboard. Um, and I'm going to give them the respect that I think they deserve. Um, because I think it's quite amazing that these have been kept so long and hopefully they'll survive another 70 years. Um, yeah, who knows? So there we have it, that is the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to click the thumbs up down below if you did enjoy it. That lets me know that you uh, like these videos and want more of them. So look out for a video next week and also later this year there should be some big projects that I'm currently working on. I also hope to show you some magic sometime soon because it's been a while since I performed to the camera and I love to do that. Um, so yeah, hopefully that should happen. But one more thing before you go, I am currently working on creating a little mini-series here on the channel called Fool Me. It's based off Penn & Teller Fool Us, except it is Fool Me, and I want you to submit your videos for me to watch and react to on the channel. It's not a competition, it is just a bit of fun, so if you want to submit your most fooling magic trick to me, I will watch it on the channel and, um, yeah, see if you can fool me. As I say, it's not a competition, I do genuinely want to be fooled, because who doesn't want to be fooled? I mean, come on. <laughs> to submit your video, you can upload it to YouTube as an unlisted video and then send me the link via this email address. There's no deadline to do this, just send in the video whenever you want within the next few weeks and I will compile this and hopefully start a little mini series or a one-off thing. I don't know, I just want to watch some magic, okay? All right, that's everything. Um, if you're new here, you can feel free to subscribe down below. It's completely up to you. If you enjoy these videos, that'll be great. Alright, see you next week.